what is the one thing about mixing that people don't understand? And on this particular film, the dialogue, we have two, two major issues. One is that everybody's, I had to decide what kind of accent we should have. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided that everybody should be speaking American English with an Italian accent, as if they were native born Italians in America and learn English. But it also brings with it a question of intelligibility. I decided that place names should be in Italian and proper nouns should be in Italian and spoken Italian. And this outside capital will magically bestow its favors upon Maserati. What did that pose for you in terms of uh, intelligibility and you know how the dialogue tracks came in? When we were working together, you were also very aware of cadences of how an Italian star would drop off more at the end right. of the sentence yeah. and things. So we did quite a lot of volume manipulation with certain syllables as well at the ends too. And you really are talking about syllables is because we would drop yes. just the very end of a syllable of a word. I recall that we, we found that sometimes shortening a vowel, if, if mm -hmm. an accent wasn't quite right, particularly on an American actor, speaking Italian accent to American English, if the accent it wasn't right, it was typically because they were drawing out an, like an A. Oh, yes. where Chicago, Chicago. When you and I f first worked together many years ago now, we could never do that on film because it, we couldn't get in that close on the magnetic tape. It was our first film, Heat. I came in right at the very end of Mohicans, but Heat was the one Heat, we first worked right. on Heat together, yeah. yeah. Thinking of Modena itself, one of the fun scenes that I enjoyed doing the most for the sound was actually the Maserati time trial. I can't remember if it was fully in the script like that where we were cutting backwards and forwards to the church with the Mozart going back onto the Maserati. The beauty of that with the rawness of the engine, the gorgeous vocal, the gorgeous singing. And then of course we introduced all the fun of the stopwatches. They were at church, but really they were listening to, they heard the gun go off for the beginning of the time trial right. and they all switched their watches on. And that was such a great sort of juxtaposition of all those different sounds. It was definitely one of the most fun things to do. The opera scene, was also a, a very special moment, I thought, for sound because it was a little opposite of what we would normally do. We started in the opera house, we hear the distant singing, which Laura's hearing because she hasn't gone to the opera, and Jesus hearing and she's not there. We cut to the opera house, we hear it in its beauty. And by the way, they were recorded live singing. Right. So that was a challenge, but again, very authentic. Then we go on stage with them and we dried it all out. We took the reverbs down a lot, so we weren't suddenly in the opera house anymore. We became more intimate. And I think that was an interesting choice that you asked me to do, but it well, worked so beautifully because now suddenly you've lost a performance and you've gone into what they're all thinking. Right. As you cut to each person, as you see their eyes, well, the, the you, design, you can read something yeah, into that. My design for that scene w was to invert the performance. I wanted opera singers lit as if they were the subjects of the scene yes. and not the actors. And the camera work is very intimate, it's very verite right in their faces, as if the two characters were the most familiar with, the tenor and the soprano, singing the aria from Traviata. Then the audience, our characters, Enzo Ferrari, Lena Lardi, Michelin Woodley, what opera does to you, it invokes memory. And then what's most alive is their flashbacks and what they're recalling. And each one that it became an opportunity to explore the backstory in totally emotional terms of young Enzo Ferrari, young Lara when Dino was three, four years old and Enzo's dancing with the dress in the 1930s and he's singing part of the, mm. the, aria. the aria. So it's like a three-way yeah. perspective, all of which has been cut through with a savage red car racing at you French and a Grand very Prix. abrupt cut to the French Grand Prix. Yeah. In this film, you had to deal with the sound of the cars, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. is music. Absolutely. But the sound of the cars, the authentic sound of not regular commercial V12s, mm -hmm. but full competition V12 Ferrari engines is powerful, it's beautiful, it's scary, it's inviting, it's all these things all at the same time. had done a lot of temp with various different car sounds when we were editing, always with the intention of going back and then recording yeah, in the, the, real the real thing, the real which, which we eventually did. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk mm -hmm. about how to how we managed the extreme dynamics? <laughs> so obviously you had to create 
cars that you could put cameras in and would go at a good speed. You got them up to 100, 120 miles an hour. No, those we, we, we would do 130, yeah. 140. But obviously they didn't have quite that sound. So we were able to access the vehicles, put them out into a, a little race trap in England and record just sound only. Right. So that's how we created the sound of the real vehicles. As far as the dynamics go, a lot of that is down to the way that the script and the way you shot it, the way it was cut. Right. Because it had these hard sort of juxtapositions all the time, which was so great. You'd get a very intense dialogue scene, which allowed us to strip backgrounds and things out of and become very almost claustrophobic in, right. in the drama yeah. between the, our characters. And then you'd, on a cut, we'd go into full blooded right. roar of engines. <laughs> I mean, that, from a sound point of view, was actually a lot of fun to do. When we think about music, that's also a big component because yeah. how can music be more exciting than the sound of those real engines? Is it uh, tackling a period piece like this? Is it hard to the specificity of the period and the location? My ambition is to bring audience into the world. The amount of detail and everything that I would want to bring into it to make it complete is vast. This is where everything really happens. So right. you pick up a resonance off walking through the mm. real place, but it's completely unchanged. Really? And there's nothing built after the 19th century in the whole of three-fifths of Modena. Oh. So everywhere you look, the cobblestone streets, mm. everything is totally... Period, there's a lot of signage you mm. had to take off. The Ferrari house is mm. actually Piero's house. And if you walk around the corner from the Ferrari house, there's a barber shop where he gets shaved every morning. So Adam sat in the chair that Enzo sat in and was shaved in the film by the son of the barber who really shaved Enzo. Oh my God. So there That's was so fantastic. much of that resonance in mixing, it's the final whiting, it's the final authoring of the movie, and you have every component. It's not a script, which is a blueprint of what you want to have happen, and it's not the shooting, which is so fragmented. When you're mixing, it is all there for real, right. okay? It's all around you. What is the one thing about mixing that people don't understand. If you notice something, then it's probably not right. What I try and aim to do is make you not notice that we're doing anything particularly with the soundtrack, you know, because if you start to hear things that confuse you, then you've lost people. Clarity is number one to me. It's always been the same way. I've mixed right. in a very traditional style, as you know. It's about making sure that it's very clear, the storyline, the narrative, the atmospheres are important very important around that and then of course the music the music choices the mu where the music comes in where it goes out right. they're all signals that you're supposed to pay attention to subconsciously if it's in the wrong place you notice it for the wrong reasons right. so what i try and do every day is make something as seamless and as meant to be as it can be for that story it's the flow of the narrative through times absolutely and the rhythm of that flow mm -hmm from quiet scenes to loud scenes to when you have the juxtaposition of a dynamic sound coming in. That's what's particularly exciting. It is exciting. I rely on you very much to be able to <laughs> calm me down and keep it in it. I do my best. And often you and I will sit and we'll go through something and then you'll go back and make an adjustment in the editing room with the picture. Right. Because it only yeah. becomes apparent while we're mixing sound that the picture needs to have an yeah. adjustment. When we mix, I move the editing rooms on the mixing stage, basically kind in adjacent rooms so that we can make... Yeah, constant adjustments. Because it really is totally, it's yeah. interactive and organic. Very and interactive. It's, it's, it's very much alive. Yeah. It's the best of times when I get to park the car in front of the sound stage and go in, and, uh, well, and I'm, I'm there every minute yes, with you, you, and it's really it's a real pleasure. I keep I always look forward to. Great. Well, me too. To get Thank to that you. Point. Thank uh, you. It's been great talking to you. Thank you good. so much. Yeah, you're welcome.